just don't get what Zeus and Hera have got going on. I mean, every relationship is complicated, right? And sure, centuries of mythology and fighting and trickery and murder don't exactly paint a flattering picture, but maybe we're the assholes here. Maybe we just can't judge a 2,000-year-old highly symbolic dynamic between the all-powerful lord of the skies and guardian of hospitality and the goddess of women and family by the same metric we'd use to deem a bestie's new boyfriend a serious red flag. Zeus and Hera are fascinating characters, but they're also gods, and that means their actions and relationships have meaning beyond the surface level. Hera punishing Zeus's lovers slash victims for Zeus's infidelity is, of course, a victim-blaming dick move, but Hera is more than a garden-variety woman scorned. She's the goddess of marriage and family. Of course she punishes people who break their vows, no matter the context. And why doesn't she punish Zeus? Well, in lore, it's because Zeus is more powerful than her, but the practical reason is because Zeus is not a person. Zeus is a story and a god. Hera's vengeance on infidelity was a social pressure on the people of ancient Greece. Stay faithful to your spouses and respect the bonds of marriage, or Hera would strike you down for defying her domain. Be a good host and keep your guests safe, because violating the laws of hospitality would bring down Zeus's wrath on your head. When we retell myths, it's easy to focus on the gods as characters, because they are. But it's easy to forget that they were also more than that. We can get hung up on the canon of the mythology not holding together, but that means we're approaching a mythology with the wrong set of expectations. We read a novel or watch a movie expecting the story to hold together, because that's the point of those stories. But the point of the mythology was not to tell a set of stories that was internally consistent, it was to establish who the gods were and what they meant to the people of ancient Greece. So we can judge Zeus and Hera's wacky red flag bonanza all we want, and we should because it's hilarious, but we shouldn't forget that those stories existed for a reason. In fact, today we're going to be talking about a story that both ties directly into a real historical celebration and paints Zeus and Hera's relationship as more mutually affectionate than average. Don't get too excited, it's still a pretty low bar. Now this story comes to us from Pausanias' descriptions of Greece, and the story begins, like so many do, with Hera pissed off at Zeus. The actual reason is unspecified, feel free to spin a wheel on that one, but this time she's more than just cranky, she seems actually willing to break things off. She dips out of Olympus and crashes on the island of Evia to sulk, and nothing Zeus says can change her mind. Faced once again with the terrifying specter of the consequences of his own actions, Zeus seeks help from King Catharon, a mountain god with a startling amount of experience in romantic shenanigans. One can only assume he's seen his share of lovesick young people looking for picturesque environments to wax poetic in. Catharon suggests that Zeus can win Hera back with a wacky hijink by playing to her jealous nature, and proposes a scheme where they spread rumors of Zeus's upcoming marriage to Plataea, daughter of Esopus and granddaughter of Catharon. For the record, bonus fun fact, all of these people share names with major local geographical features in Boeotia. Catharon is a mountain range, Esopus is a river, and Plataea is the name of the whole city. So this is most likely a situation where all parties involved are gods, nymphs, and other anthropomorphic personifications of the kingdom and its natural environs. Anyway, Catharon suggests they really sell the bit with a celebration parade where Zeus can show off his new bride. True to form, when Hera hears about Zeus gallivanting around with some brand new squeeze, she gets on a right twist about it and flies up to Boeotia in a furious rage, finding Zeus heading a lavish bridal procession with someone dolled up in a beautiful wedding dress. Hera storms the procession in all her glory and rips the dress away, finding nothing underneath but a wooden statue. Hera is shocked to learn that, at least in this specific case, Zeus genuinely only had eyes for her. And in Boeotia, they say that the heart of the queen grew three sizes that day. Zeus and Hera reconcile at a reunion so beautiful it was commemorated in the Daedala Festival for centuries, where wooden statues were carved from sacred oaks and carried through marriage ceremonies up the peak of Mount Cathera, where a huge offering to Hera and Zeus was prepared and burned to celebrate the one time their relationship actually kind of made sense. So remember, folks, if you and your partner are having a tough time, they're gonna absolutely love it if you replace them with a doll. You had plenty money, 1922. You let other women make a fool of you. Why don't you do 